Hey everyone, Joe here. In this video, I'm gonna be answering the question of whether you should put delay or reverb first in the signal chain when mixing. I'm gonna go over what the differences are, if there are any, and how you should be setting up the order of your reverbs and delays for which situations. So there are really three ways you can use reverbs and delays on your tracks in your mix. You can have your delay first going into the reverb, you can have the reverberated audio going into the delay, or you can be sending uh, your signal to both the reverb and the delay exactly at the same time. And just to give you a quick answer off the bat, yes, there is a difference in, in sound uh, and how it works between the three of them. Now, if you're not sure what delay and reverb do exactly, I'll leave a link on the screen in the description. Uh, to an overview video of exactly what the two effects do, how they affect the audio. Um, so best to get a good understanding of that before we go into the order that you should be placing them. So when answering the question whether you should put delay or reverb first in your signal chain, it's important to think about what kind of effect you're going for because ultimately there's no right or wrong answer. Um, they're slightly different in, in the way they affect the audio, but what your mix needs is going to depend on the song, what kind of sound you're going for. So to make things easier to understand, I like to think of it like you're playing a guitar uh, live in a room. So you've got your guitar, you're playing a guitar solo, and you're going through your delay pedal to make your nice delay effect then that's coming out of your amp. And then what's coming out of your amp is gonna be reverberated around the room. You're gonna get that natural ambience of the room or the stadium that you're playing in. So in that sense, the kind of natural way of doing things would be for your guitar to be delayed and then for the reverb to come after. So if you're going for something sort of a realistic ambience uh, and a natural tone in your mix, then that'd be a good place to start putting your delay first and your reverb um, next in the signal chain, simply for that reason. Ultimately, you've got to think to yourself, do I want my delayed audio reverberated or do I want my reverberated audio delayed? So if you're going delay first and then reverb, um, the reverb is just going to be giving an ambience to that delayed signal. Whereas if you're going reverb then delay, you're going to get more of a kind of wash of sound because each, uh, each delay, each tap of that delay um, is going to be replicating that reverberated signal. And we'll hear in a minute what difference it makes. But ultimately, it really just depends on how it sounds in your mix. Again, I always say there's no right and wrong in mixing. If it sounds good, then it is good. But as I said, there's a third option of sending the signal to both at the same time. Now, what I want, want to do now is show you the setup that I've got here. Um, I've got this lead guitar here and I've got an insert of a delay plugin and an insert of a reverb plugin. Uh, and then also I've got set up uh, a send. So I've got a delay and a reverb on an auxiliary bus down there. And then I'm sending uh, the signal to both of those. So we're now gonna take a look um, and see what difference it makes and how you can actually go about placing uh, your effects in, in a series in the signal chain. And then we're gonna see and hear the difference between them. So just for clarity, um, I've got two sends here, delay, del, verb, reverb, and just sending those to, to the auxiliary buses that have those two effects on. And then replica is a delay, and deverb is obviously a reverb, and they're inserts, they're just directly on the track itself. Now I'm showing you this on Pro Tools, it doesn't matter what door you're using, it should work in exactly the same way. There might be a few doors who, that do things differently, but generally this is how it's gonna work. If you're putting on your effects as an insert directly on the track, it's gonna work from top to bottom in order. So I've got this guitar solo, it's getting EQ'd, then it's going into a compressor, then if we activated those two, it would be going into the delay, and then that EQ'd, compressed, and delayed signal is then gonna be reverberated. So that's the order that it's working in. Whereas, if you're sending your signal to, to an auxiliary buses, so I've got the delay and reverb there, it's effectively splitting that signal. It's sending it to the delay channel, and it's sending it to the reverb channel. So that's working in, at exactly the same time. So in that situation, uh, it wouldn't really matter what order you put them in. Um, but 
again, it does have its own sort of sound, sending something to, to Revo and Delay at the same time. Let's have a quick listen and see if you can hear any difference. So we're going to go for, I'm going to take a look at the inserts first because that's uh, where, where the order actually matters. So I've gone for quite a lot of reverb and delay just so you can hear what's going on. Um, we've got the delay first here and then the reverb. Let's have a listen. And then the reverb first and then the delay. Let's just have a listen to that tail. So to me, the difference between those is very subtle. Uh, it seems a little bit wetter, um, a little bit more fuller on the tail there when the delay comes second after the reverb because we're delaying that reverberated signal. Uh, if you can't hear the difference there, what I've done is uh, bounced those two separately. So here, here's one I did earlier. We've got, uh, I bounced it down um, with, with the signal going to the delay and then the reverb. And then I've got the reverb going into the delay. And you can see at the tail end there, very subtle differences. Um, when we've got the reverb going into the delay, we are getting more of a, a full tail, kind of more signal uh, at the end there. Not a huge amount at all, but it's going to depend on your signal, on your effects and things like that. So there is a clear difference, but how much audible difference it makes really depends on your mix and, the, and what you're working with. But ultimately, it's not going to be something that makes or breaks your mix. It, Pick one that sounds right to you, the order that sounds right based on what I've explained and go from there. You can always experiment, move things around. And then finally, we're just going to take a look at uh, using sends, sending them both at the same time. So I normally don't put reverbs and delays as inserts. I'll normally go into a bus. So I've got my delay and reverb there. And again, it doesn't matter what order you put these in because it's going to be sending, uh, sending to the bus at the same time. What I normally end up doing is sending both to the, at the same time and then automating the delay at various points uh, if I want something to sound a bit more full, a bit more roomy. Uh, unless I've recorded something with a delay on the track. So if I've recorded uh, a guitar that's gone through a delay pedal, it will obviously have that baked in. And then I'll send that to a reverb bus. So effectively you are getting that delay first to going into the reverb. Um, but again, I bounced a couple down. Um, the top one, it, this is this is just using the sends. I'm going delay to reverb. The bottom one is going reverb to delay. And basically, visually, there's zero difference. Um, just to sort of give you some proof of concept there. You might notice that there are some very subtle differences to the waveform, but that's uh, most likely just to do with how the delay reacted to the signal at the time when I bounced them down separately. So yeah, ultimately it's not something that's going to make or break your mix, uh, but it's definitely worth thinking about and just really think, like with all mixing decisions, what you want, what effect do you want um, before you start putting in plugins. Um, do you want a reverberated delayed signal or do you want a delayed reverberated signal um, or do you just want them happening at the same time? So just think about that to give you a starting point and then you're welcome to experiment as much as you like and whatever sounds right for your mix, whatever sounds good, that's what you should go for. But if you really just want me to tell you something to work with, something to start with, uh, then I would err on the side of putting your delay first into your reverb um, or sending them both at the same time rather than going reverb to delay. Because in my experience, you do get a bit more kind of washiness, a bit too much ambience. It can start to get a little bit muddy, messy. Uh, but again, just experiment and see what's right for your mix. So let me know in the comments section below, what do you do? Do you go reverb first, delay first? Do you do them both at the same time? And has, it, has this video changed your mind at all? Let me know what you think. And if you want to see more mixing tutorials and tips like this, just hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.